I'm one of the twins, Leslie and Wesley. I said, Mr. Washington, but you know, you know, I got these big dreams. You know, I like talking to people. I love people. I said, I, I want to work with people, and I got this dream of buying my mama a home. Could, could I do that, Mr. Washington? He said, it's possible, Mr. Brown. And as he walked away, I called him again. I said, Mr. Washington? He said, what do you want now? I said, uh, I'm the one, sir. I said, I'm the one. You, you remember me, sir. I'm Miss Mamie Brown's boy. I'm the one. I'm the one. And you must feel that, that that's why you're here, because you are the one. And I remember when PBS first played one of my specials called You Deserve, one Sunday afternoon in Miami, Florida. I had some friends call him to tell him to tune in. And he watched the program. He called me in Detroit, and I answered the phone. I said, hello. He said, may I speak to Les Brown, please? I said, who's calling? He said, you know who this is. I said, oh, Mr. Washington, it's you. He said, you were the one, weren't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, and you were so crazy. I said, I know, but I'm rich now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor of the Penobscot building, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? I used to listen to tapes day in and day out about See You at the Top, my, my great friend Zig and, and, and Dennis Waitley and different other motivational speakers and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. And Dexter saying, don't let nobody steal your dream. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. While you're here, and before you go back home to your respective cities and communities, write down at least five reasons on why you deserve your dream on why you won't give up, what's going to make you unstoppable, why you must be unreasonable, because logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life, like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny, you've got to be an unreasonable person. You've got to be an uncommon person. So write down the reasons of why you're here. My first major goal was to buy my mother a home. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, what, what will reasons do, Les? Nietzsche said, if you know the why for doing, you can endure almost anyhow. What do you mean by that? If you know why you're doing something, when the hard times come and they're gonna come, when the disappointments and the rejections come and they're gonna come by the truckloads, your reasons will be your rod and staff to comfort you, to pick you up once again. I got a saying on one of my tapes, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Let your reasons get you back up. I remember when I, I bought the home for my mother and she came out of the car. When I opened the door, I said, Mom, I think I know these people in this house. That was my first major goal. And then I couldn't conceal it anymore. I said, Mama, I got this for you. And as she went from room to room, looking at the house and saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No one ever could have convinced me that this could have happened to me. And she looked at me and she said, Leslie, and you caused me so much problems as a boy. You were always in the stuff. She said, no one could have convinced me that day when I walked in that house and this lady was holding you and your brother. 
And she said, ma'am, I want you to promise me two things. And she said, what is it? She says, one, promise me that you won't separate them. She said, I want them raised together. I want them to know each other. I got pregnant while my husband was away in the war, and I can't keep them. Promise me that you won't separate them. She said, I promise I won't. I've never had children. I promise I won't separate them. And she said, promise me that you'll never tell them about who I am because if my husband ever found out, he would kill me. She said, I promise. And she said that she gave them to us and, and she kind of cried and she, and she was walking out the door and she looked at my adopted mother. She said, remember, don't you separate them. She said, I swear to God, I won't. I won't separate them. I'll keep them together. And she said, as I held y'all in my arms, I never had any children of my own. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I knew with the help of God, I will do it. And ladies and gentlemen, my mother had a dream of having children and raising us. She didn't know how she was going to do it. You're going to be just like that. And some of you are already there. Well, you don't know how you're going to make this happen, but you just feel within yourself some way, somehow, with the help of God, I'm going to make it happen. Repeat after me, please. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it.